Oh, hey, Owen. How you doing? <sighs> Depressed. <laughs> you and your jokes. I'm going to go kill myself now. A podcast? Sure. Let's do it. Where do you keep the razor blades? This is a podcast hosted by Owen and Phil. Grab your family and your friends because we've got some time to kill. I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut myself now. Speaking of killing, I'm cutting myself now. Did you lock your front door? How do I stop the bleeding? Cause if you didn't, we are liable to break in and stab you and leave you bleeding on the floor. We spent all of our money to bring you this production. Why? Why are you still I hope singing? You can all appreciate that we spent nothing on this introduction. For the love of God, help me. This is our podcast, yeah, yeah. It's called The Wave of Absurdity. Help me. Now that you've listened this far, you'll be trapped here for an eternity. Oh! Let's listen in and see what the boys are up to. <laughs> Hey, Owen here. Just to let you know that there has been a few sound difficulties with this podcast. It should be all fixed in uh, episode two of the podcast. So just to let you know that that you know that we fucked up. Uh, more specifically, Phil fucked up than anybody else. But uh, it is shambles for the first episode, and I do know that. Hopefully, episode two will be better. Now I've got some salad tape, and I'm going to go salad tape up a parcel. And when I do that, the episode will begin. Hey, this is a podcast. What's it called? There's a car alarm going off outside. That's a very odd name for a podcast, Owen. Well, no, I was, I was just saying that there's a car, somebody's probably trying... Shambles. This is sh- shambles already. Relevant sound effect. Oh, yeah. Well, welcome to the brand new podcast that's splashing its way onto YouTube. Welcome to the Wave of Absurdity. With your host, Owen. And again, well, I say again. (laughs) This is the first, right? This is the first episode? Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I'm your host, Owen, with my voluptuous host. Mm. They call me Voluptuous Phil. Just Owen does, but you can start today. Don't say that. Honestly, don't say that. You know what some people are like, Phil. They. I mentioned one thing about your nipples on the fan page. Yeah. Um, Never heard anything. They've they just gone crazy for it. I've actually, we've actually got an email concerning your nipples, which we will get to later on. Good stuff. But good stuff. Don't call yourself voluptuous, especially around these freaks that listen to this. <laughs> okay, <laughs> it's. It's a bad situation to be in. Uh, nipples unseen, by the way. It's just unwarranted nipple love. Mm. See, I don't know. I think a lot of the people on, not not that view, this video, but a lot of people on the fan page, because I've got to, known, got to know them on a, a much deeper personal level. Um, I actually know a lot of the viewers that watch this are fucking insane. Ah. So, all right, that's good because I thought you were going to say I know a lot of people appreciate my taste in nipples, and that obviously, if you were talking to me, then my nipples were worthy of consumption. Uh, poor choice of words on my part, I might add. <laughs> that's terrible. So, coming up on today's show, look at me being all official. Coming up on today's show, we What's have world news. Where we talk about interesting slash funny news that's been going on. You guessed it, on the world. Not to be confused with intergalactic space news. We just leave that for the other podcast. We also got Master Debater, which (laughs) it was my name. It was my idea for the name. I'm just going to say that right now. Which we have topics that that could be trivial or they could be absolutely in dire need of a debate. And me and Phil... 
We get assigned to be pro or cons, and then we master debate it out of us. Uh, we also have Mamma Mia! That's a nice mouth, Phil. Hey. Yes. <laughs> Calm down there, big boy. I'm excited! That's when, this is a stalker of a, uh, a segment, this is when Phil eats something for our viewing pleasure. We also have viewer questions. And uh, where we answer your email. So I guess we should plug the email since this is a nice segue. Uh, if you have any questions or comments to tell us how bad the show is, please do email in to waveofabsurdity at hotmail.com. Excellent. So I, I've got a whole notepad with three things on them to talk about on the podcast in case the podcast gets stale, which I think it already has done. Has it? I haven't been paying attention. <laughs> Not a lot of people have. All right. Well, <laughs> Owen, let us hear one of these things. For I, too, have a notepad with some things written on it. Okay, well, I'm going to give you... Well, firstly, I think I should actually name and shame a particular person. I think this cool. is the proper medium. This is how I can do it. I can publicly humiliate the fool. So... We all know there's somebody, I mean, Phil, I'm sure you're aware that there's probably somebody that's absolutely horrible with technology, yes? Yes. Yes, I mean, if you uh, you show a, like an old person to a computer, they just end up horribly, yeah. they don't double click anything and they're like, hey, why is this not working? And in God your head, damn it, Grandpa. In your head, you're like, use the scroll button. Use the <laughs> exactly, the and they're shifting to put capitals down. Just use the caps lock button. So I'm, I'm sure, Phil, you've had many of these experiences, yes? Yes, I have. Is this what you're about to talk about? I get a sense. Well, it's it's sort of like this because it actually concerns you. Ah, you how, did I not, how did I not see this man. coming? <laughs> so a few days ago, actually, we were talking on Skype, and I asked you to move the conversation over to Steam because I was playing a game, and I thought, right... So there I am playing my game. I'm always looking at my Steam overlay, waiting for your chat message to pop up. There's it never an did. <laughs> the chat message never popped up. I never saw you come online. And then a few days ago, I checked my Steam profile. <laughs> and then there's a comment from you saying, I have no idea how to talk on Steam. No, I was referring to the. I was referring to the hip new drug called Steam. I don't know how of to... course you were. What I don't understand is, why did you just message me on Skype saying, I don't know how to do this? Why did you just but try I and did. pass it off as like nothing happened? Because you said you were busy. You said you were playing games and I didn't want to be like, uh, yeah, yeah, if you could just stop playing your game for a moment. And... No, I, you, we just have a little chat on Steam. I mean, I, I can play my games. I can quickly type you a message and continue playing. Oh, it's not that yeah. big of a deal. All you or don't... nothing, Owen. <laughs> All or nothing. I don't want your half-ass attention. Full attention. What are you, got ADHD or something? You're like a little child that's just hugging onto my leg as I try and wiggle you off. I mean, come on, dude. All right. Well, you know what? Taking that comparison a little further, while I'm down here, it certainly smells... That's all I got. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. I joined Steam. I never really checked it out a whole lot mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you didn't you didn't think to go onto your friends list and see my name and click on my name and see what would wait, happen wait, wait. slow down no <laughs> <laughs> i'm going a mile a minute let, let me write this down now well i'm sorry uh you know i had other things no on my <laughs> mind mm -hmm. I, ju I just don't understand why you didn't just bring this up over skype so now i've had to publicly humiliate you Speaking of public humiliation, I had to get my car inspected yesterday. Oh, yeah? How'd that turn out? Big uh, bill? I passed. Uh, no, actually, I had an in, one of my in-laws. I don't know if I should say that, because it's kind of like, wink, wink, here's a 20. Know what I'm saying? <laughs> I mean, they check it. It's just, I don't have to pay the full inspection price. I'm pretty sure that's illegal, Phil. Uh... No, I'm only defrauding the company that did the inspection, not the state itself. Oh, that's okay. I thought that, oh, okay, no, sorry. I thought that if it was fraud on a, a grand scale, then it's bad. I didn't realize small fraud was okay. Woof. 
Well, to thank be- goodness that nobody takes a higher moral ground here. To thank goodness fair, for that. To be fair, it's all about the inspection. It's not about the big nameless dealership that didn't get the $87 <laughs> for stickers that say, this car doesn't have any holes in the floor. Stickers? <laughs> that well, they don't, should be earned. They don't specifically say that, but it's implied that if these stickers are on your car, you don't have big holes in your floor. While I was there, I was able to use their computers too. So not only oh, no. did I not only did I shaft them some money, <laughs> I looked up weird shit on their computers. Penguin uh, porn? Not yet. I don't Speaking of penguins, actually, um, name a penguin. He was an impressionist artist. Porn. Sorry, what? Sorry? Could you repeat that question? <laughs> name a penguin. He was an impressionist artist. Mm, I can't think of one off the top of my head. Peck Esso. The florist that was right next to the dealership had a sign, a little marquee, and oh, yeah. it said, We're so happy it's summer, we wet our plants. <laughs> <laughs> I know you appreciate that type of wordplay. <laughs> uh, I do, and you're going to appreciate this one. Okay. Why do penguins have a thick layer of feathers? Two. Protect against the cold, but that's not very funny. No, because it's snow code. Oh. <laughs> hey, I hit the wrong button. <laughs> oh. So, I don't know about you. How do you how do you get back at people who annoy you? I mean, what do you do something devious or anything horrible well, slash awesome to anybody that sort of niggles you? Yeah, uh, my current plan right now is to get the person involved in a podcast and then halfway through, disappear completely. Oh, that's pretty oh. cool. Well, I, I have a lot of, uh, you know, like, uh, what am I saying? You know, people are attracted to what you enjoy. So I'm obviously a gamer. So I've got a lot of gaming friends. Right. As you would imagine. So what I've been doing as of late is if somebody annoys me or if I hate somebody, I will, you know, you know, the game Sims 3. Yes. Sorry. Is the hating and just being angered? Are they mutually exclusive? Well, no, they can, they, they could just annoy me and then I could put them in. You'll see. So okay. I so play the game Sims 3 and if I, if somebody annoys me or if I'm getting on their nerves and they, they, they like hate or annoy me, they feel annoyed by me. Uh, because they're gamers, I go onto The Sims 3 and I make them go into a gay relationship with me on The Sims. <laughs> so how many gay relationships on The Sims have you had so far? Well, I've got one successful one going right <laughs> now. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a good way to annoy people because I will give them a running commentary of when I'm playing The Sims, of what's happening. Uh, For example... I, well, my friend Chris, um, now he's black, so this is going to come into the story later on, but he's black, so <laughs> I was giving him a running commentary of what I was doing and what I was building my character up to be. Um, I made him like a slob, lazy, you know, all the worst traits that a person could have. And then when it came to choosing a career, I was like, okay, what am I going to choose? Okay, I'm going to be a scientist. And he's like, oh, okay. And then when it comes up to you, when are you going to be? Uh, you're going to be a criminal. Uh oh. <laughs> so then he instantly sweet. said, "Why am I a criminal?" I said, "You're going back to your roots," which is a bittersweet moment for me because, again, I love to troll people that annoy me or get on my nerves or if they hate me. So again, it's a way of getting back to them, but in a great way because it's a continuous, it's a continuous sort of role, and we've got a adopted daughter she's called poppy uh, he neglects her so is, is she racist too is that 
I thought you were going to say, uh, get back to your roots and then make some sort of movie joke. That no, no, that's racially just pure oh, racial right. slam. Well, but that seems, seems like an extensive way to get back <laughs> at somebody. Did you ever record it and send it to people? Or? No, no, I haven't. I just, I just do this for my own amusement. Um, there's another dude who knows about this, and his, his, his name is Paul. And he will often bring up that... Uh, Chris is in a criminal career, and then we start annoying my friend Chris. Uh, it's, it's a beautiful moment, and I really do love doing it. And hell, maybe, Phil, I can make you a sim, a sim version of you, and maybe we could uh, hook up, and maybe I could do like a small little update in the in the podcast of what we've been up to. Oh, I could get Sims 3, and maybe... <laughs> It's not multiplayer. And maybe get rid of it because it's not <laughs> multiplayer. That's what I will do. Well, if you want to... i just like to point out that I know that you are going to do it regardless of what I say. Or at least say you did it and be like, yeah, your dude's like 80 years old. Uh, oh, God, I got carded for alcohol <laughs> on the same day I was like lamenting to myself like, uh gray hairs, gray hairs. <laughs> and then i go get some beer and i'm like yeah, is that please. still like a flattery well thing to you now or is it just oh what the fuck do you mean no, yeah, me. it's, it is it's it's both actually or is it an insult is it an insult to you because i i i love it because if people card me i just go oh, how dare you <laughs> i'm old enough to be your mother oh <laughs> so not only do I confuse the hell out of them? I also get a laugh, well, from myself, so... <laughs> That's all that really matters. As long as I'm enjoying life, who the hell cares? So you got to stumble I think... on my black friend, and you got to insult <laughs> other people. But who cares? As long as I'm having fun. Way! I think next time you should say, I'm old enough to do your mother! <laughs> <laughs> now, they notice. that's just rude. Yes. Oh... Uh... Speaking what of do root, penguins wear to the beach? Their birthday suit? No, suits, penguin penguin suit? That's There better not be penguin suit or something incredibly lame like that. What do penguins wear? A bikini. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I know. I know. Hey, Owen. Have you yes. heard the news? <laughs> Who's going first? Okay, so for my world news, I found I found two okay. interesting stories. Now I'm not going to I'm only gonna read one, but I'm going to read just the 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 headline. Okay. Of the I other might, one that I found, because I, I just found it tickled me. If I might interrupt real fast to let the listeners, or as Owen likes to call them, the viewers, let's let the listeners know that uh, Owen and I have not shared any links with each other. All this, what he has, I have not seen or heard. He has not shared the links. And what I have for him, he has not shared mm. or learned. Uh also like to continue this interruption by saying if you have some wacky weird headlines that happen to be well not necessarily headlines but any weird article of news or something send it to the old email which i'm not sure since we restarted i'm not sure is on this recording wave of absurdity at hotmail.com excellent i'm sorry for that interruption please continue owen we, well we if we're going to interrupt me so very rudely we should also continue that we are, we are only going to get Phil to eat stuff if I can maintain my composure when he gives his new story. So I'm going to be reading his new story, but if I can't maintain my composure, he's not going to have that award-winning feature. This so is correct. Let's just get that out of the way. Now, this one, again, this is not. This is just the headline, and I don't know why it tickled me so. But uh, <laughs> Why am I laughing at it? <laughs> it says, um, Transplant patient woke up from coma to ask for KFC chicken burger. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, KFC chicken burger? 
Yeah, I know. I mean, if you're going to go to KFC, get the chicken. Don't get the chicken burger, man. That's crazy. <laughs> get back in your coma. <laughs> what made it... Well, I'm not going to go into it that very much, but what, what made it even sweeter was that his family were around him the whole time. They stayed there 24 hours. You know, somebody was already there and they thought, you know, he's going to wake up and say, oh, I love you. No. Nope. Right. Give me a KFC chicken burger, man, <laughs> bitch. Bucket of grease. <laughs> Sleepy hungry. The annoying thing is, is that he's got a liver disease and he's already had two livers now and now he wants to go around poisoning his yeah, third whoa, one. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's just, yeah. That's absurd. But anyway, my proper news story, and I will link to you, is... It is stag do brothers prosecuted by the RSPCA after chicken prank goes wrong. Oh, that's quite a headline. Whoa. So two drunken brothers took six chickens on a friend's stag do and they were prosecuted by the RSPCA after two of them were killed. Chickens or friends? chickens? Okay. <laughs> so Craig and Bradley Barnett dumped six live hens in the hotel room of the groom to be as a prank. You know, to start the night out, as men do. But s several <laughs> semi-naked members of the group removed the chickens from the hotel after returning in the early hours to find them where they were. As a result of being released, one of the chickens was slaughtered by a fox and the second one was later found dead. Uh, <laughs> two of the others were found in a terrified state in the next morning by an RSPCA inspector, Graham Hammond. The other two were never seen again. It is said that they have gone on to make appearances in many stag do hotel rooms, but that is still unconfirmed to this point. Uh, police are still uh, investigating. <laughs> Mr. Hammond later studied the hotel CCTV and found footage of the Barnett brothers taking the hens up to the stag room after they claimed they had been egged on oh, by others. Oh no! <laughs> they did not do that. They did. I just... <laughs> I saw the security footage, and I just, I just, I don't, I just find it funny that there's two, two MIA, two killed, and two of them have been happily rehomed. Like it was such a traumatic experience that they had to rehome them instead of putting them back on a farm. Yeah, like they're going, oh man, I can't handle this, man. I've, city life, man. I've seen it, man. <laughs> exactly, uh, it's insane. I just wanted to what happened to the other two chickens. I mean, what are they up to? I mean, is it some sort of hilarious across the country like <laughs> sitcom they've got going on now? Is that what they're doing? You know, have they been eaten by a fox at this point? <laughs> That's the first thing I thought of. Oh, this man. is a huge article. I'm, it is. I already read the synopsis pretty much. I know people have died from the heat wave here and they don't get this much. <laughs> I only pegged it because they had the egged on by others pun yeah, in there. I'm, so I thought, you know what? You know who appreciates a good pun in? It, it's Phil. Oh, well, that is that is good. I'm looking to see where I can email to find out who wrote that so that I can <laughs> send them a follow-up email that is much more offensive than the initial inquiry. Oh, so what is your news story that I have to read without laughing? Oh, it is tough. Our, how are we on the rules? Is it strictly like in our, uh, not in our previous podcast, because there was none, but in our previous discussion, how, how does this work laughter wise? I mean, because you were saying you, that if, if you can I be laugh, the judge. Okay. All right. If only there was some sort of news story that related to monkey butts and sucking peanuts out of anuses. Uh, if only. However, however. All right. Oh, wait, wait, wait. You are going to have to just read the headline. This is not part of the challenge, but I need to get it off my screen. Is this some sort of six fantasy? <laughs> no. Read the headline, Owen. Go on. <laughs> Say it in this voice. Read it slow. Nice. And slow. <laughs> You're not laughing at me. I know you just saw the link. <laughs> Good old Philly. <laughs> Go ahead and let the crowd getting, know. He was getting offended by this. <laughs> okay, the headline reads, 
man exposes himself at the Association for the Blind. <laughs> World's most stupid fetish. <laughs> oh, can you hear this bitch? Can you hear it? Yeah. <laughs> People and they're just thinking just a slow clap. They start slow clapping too. Yeah. What are we clapping for? I got no order. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, that's not really a news article going on. That's uh, like flashing your weenie in front of somebody that's got a coma. I mean, it, it, they're not going to be aware of it. It doesn't matter. They're just going to wake up and want some goddamn chicken burgers. <laughs> cool back joke. Oh. Yeah. All right. Here is your final challenge, Owen. Okay. It's rough. It's for it's all the Phil Eats. All the, all the marvels. Okay. I I oh I oh Ohio teddy bear lover. Well, <laughs> why are you laughing? Why have they censored the teddy bear's eyes? <laughs> They're protecting its identity. But he's got a distinctive yellow bow on. I only know that one bear that carries around a distinctive yellow bow. That what? son of a bitch. <laughs> that little whore. Okay. So could read June the 15th. For the fourth time in the past two years, a Cincinnati man has been arrested for masturbating in public with the aid of a teddy bear. <laughs> is the teddy bear just helping him do it or is he concealing it inside the teddy bear? Poor Teddy Ruxpin. I am intrigued. Now, I must read on. Charles Marshall, 28, was arrested Wednesday evening after the employees at the health clinic. Why is he at a... <laughs> I, don't know. I guess it is a healthy part of a, every man's, you know, it's, it's just part of growing up. Spot, okay, the health clinic spotted him pleasuring himself in an alley. He was in an alley. He wasn't even... Well, I, if he was in an alley, you know... That's, it's, an, it's a very ambiguous term anymore. Uh, is it? <laughs> yeah, you can call lots of things an alley and still not be in the, mm -hmm. you know. Well, if he was like out on the sidewalk, then that's a different story. But Marshall, pictured in the adjacent mugshot, uh, he kind of looks like, I don't know how you would. Mm. He looks like he had a lot of grave thoughts. And yeah, he kind of looks pretty. He doesn't have very many expressions. I think he only does one, and I think he's doing it in the photo. He could be with a teddy bear. We're not sure. Reports are still out on that. Uh, he was cited for disorderly contact. Uh, where are I? Oh, I'm lost. Uh, oh, God. So a municipal court convicted. records. Where am I? <gasps> second paragraph, man. <laughs> or third, technically. Okay. Municipal court records. Sorry, I, I've been looking at the... Were you trying to find the teddy bear? <laughs> <laughs> that I son gotta, of a bitch still owes me a fiver. I gotta order me one of those. So the court's records show that Marshall has already been convicted three times of engaging in public indecency slash disorderly conduct with a teddy bear. Oh. Oh, man. Well, at least it's not like an Elmo doll or anything that's <laughs> you know, didn't have like a Barbie doll straddling his shaft. The <laughs> misdemeanor court's result in a short jail sentence and, and small fines for the Marshall. Small was... fines! Sorry, I don't know what I'm talking Because he's got a small... he's black, so we don't know. Marshall was the first... Marshall was first busted in February 2010 when witness spotted... When witnesses spotted him engaged with a teddy bear in the men's bathroom. What's he doing in the men's bathroom with a teddy bear? At a public In a public library. library. Yeah. Well, he was ordered to stay away from the <laughs> library. Good job, judge. <laughs> He was again arrested in November 2010 and August 2011 for masturbating with a stuffed animal teddy bear and masturbating using a teddy bear in public place where minors were likely to be present. Whoa. Yeah. It is unclear whether the cops this week seized Marshall's teddy bear. <laughs> <laughs> Get on the ground! Get on the ground! <laughs> <laughs> Are they going to start sampling it for semen stains or anything like that? <laughs> I mean, I don't know what the hell. It is unclear. Okay, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Okay, it is unclear whether the cop seized Marshall's teddy bear. Now, that is, that is probably the biggest tragedy of this story. Probably. Or even if they would want it to. If so, fellow Cincinnatians should look for him at the 
At an area, oh, at an area, Toys R Us. Yes. Hmm. That's. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Well, real fast, as I was looking through the comments, all 221 of them, one of the people said, tell me, guys, that if when you first read this article, you didn't think about having sex with a teddy bear. Owen, be honest. Yes, I, I did. The first thing about, you thought of. I was thinking the, about how I would do it. And I thought about like cutting a hole in its bottom and like taking out some of the stuffing and just sticking it on. We'll see, and then, what's the difference? I mean, if you're, it says using the teddy bear to aid masturbation. So like he see, said, I don't, he, yeah, I, I don't know if he like held his little hands and. <laughs> <laughs> or if he cut a hole in it, because then that would be, you know, fucking penetrating. But then. Bear. Oh, I, I don't know. I mean, where's where's the line between aiding and penetrating? I mean... I guess as soon as you hit the stuffing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait. Well, I mean... That's... that's sorry. That's did the I, other... Scroll where did down, he finish himself? Scroll down to the uh, second comment by Kevin Kittleson. Good lord, I already... Oh. Okay. Just, just uh... Put in some filler. Okay, well, I don't think, I don't know if Owen passed his test. Charles, who? Kevin. Charles Kevin. Marshall was also charged with being redundant. The teddy bear was already stuffed. <laughs> Clever man. Hmm. He did well, not stuff that teddy, he packed it. I hear you. <laughs> Buster, yeah, yo. All right. I think you lost it when you read the line. It is unclear whether cops this week sees Marshall's teddy bear. However, I was I was impressed. We'll see. We'll see what happens time wise. <laughs> well, here's another. This is another comment from a CEO at Marshall Beach Web Design. So this is the CEO saying this. Well, SEO. Years ago, a woman came out to feed her horse in the High Point. NC, I don't even know what that says for NC. North, and North found Carolina. a very similar man standing on a box doing the horse. Some bestiality going on. Mm -hmm. He was still at it when the police arrived too. The horse was too traumatized by the pre-marital mm -hmm. sex to testify. <laughs> Pre-mare? Pre-mare? Mare? Mm. Horse? Mare? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, those SEOs of Myrtle Beach web design. All right. Well, well I guess uh, that was world news. If you have some world news, remember, wave of absurdity, absurdity, all in word, at hotmail.com. Links in the underbar. Yes. I say link, email address in the underbar. If you so, ever expose yourself to the blind, let us know how it went. I don't think that would be a great reception, to be honest. <laughs> it's like showing them a silent movie and expecting great critical acclaim. Just, it's just not going to happen. Oh, that headline. Okay. So, hey. Hey. I'm, I'm going to pull out this one because I think the podcast is getting stale. Ooh, do you now? So, while we are making filler to fill out this hour, this is what filler actually means, people, in case you didn't know. Hey, Phil. Yes. Are you familiar with lateral thinking? Hmm. Let me think laterally for a moment. Yes. Yes, I am. Okay, good. So, for the people that don't know, it's, it's something that's extraordinarily stupid. <laughs> so here, here's a good one. How could a baby fall out of a 20 story building onto the ground and live? So you're thinking, okay, how could a baby fall out of a 20 story building? How could it live? Right. Um, the answer is the baby fell out of the ground floor window. You're thinking, oh, well, that's yes. stupid. And you're well, right. Well, it's because the assumption was that when you said out of a 20 story building that they 
the baby fell from the highest level, even though you never said that. Exactly. See, so you see where I'm getting at. So, yes, Phil. I'd like to interrupt you, Owen, since you felt it necessary earlier to out me. I would like to out so you. So, Phil, <laughs> baby boy, Bubby. Carry on, no, carry on. If you want to, yeah, no. Want to bring uh, this? I'm, I'm, I'm pretty confident in my own defending abilities. It doesn't matter. It doesn't. It doesn't say... matter. It doesn't matter because it wasn't recorded. I have no proof. But when Owen read that as a demonstration to me when he was explaining what he was talking about, he said it wrong the first I, time. I totally didn't say it wrong at all. He, you, you heard wrong. it wrong. No. Yeah. Oh, yeah. How do you hear something wrong? Out of curiosity, you, I've you, heard you that phrase before. It, as wrong. Like, it went oh, you... incorrect, and then your brain was just like, oh, farts, <laughs> nipples, tits. Oh, that's what he said. I. Oh. All right. What's what is the current? <laughs> okay, so this is if you if you get this right, um, I'll give away a game on my Facebook page. Whoa. So <laughs> pressure's on. If I get it wrong, I'll do something b better. <laughs> <laughs> so good. So, uh, when this episode goes up, if Phil has indeed got this right, I will make a contest. So, oh wait, do I have until? Oh no, obviously I could look it up. All right, hang on, let me. You, no, you're not allowed here. to look anything up. This is just right, pure you, you. You would hear me type, I'm sure. Okay, so bad boy Bobby was warned by his mother to never to open the cellar door, or he would see things that he was not meant to see. One day, while his mother was out, he did open the cellar door. What did he see? Oh. Okay. So, could you repeat that for me so that I might... Okay. Even I Bad boy Bubby was warned by his mother to never open the cellar door or he would see things that he was never meant to see. Uh, one day... While he his mother was out, he did open the cellar door. What did he see? Now I did hmm. change the wording up a bit, but that doesn't matter. Uh, yeah. Uh. If you open up the cellar door, what are you gonna see? Hmm. I mean, his mother tells him not to open it up, so I don't know. All right, all right. What's what's the gimmick here? <laughs> Things that you. How was that phrase? Things that you would. Never seen before? No. Uh, things that he was not meant to see. Ah. Oh. Yes, well, that's why you put them in the cellar. I, I don't know, plumbing? Because uh, <laughs> uh, he's going to go around with his little wrench, <laughs> trying to be a little plumber. Mom, look at me! I don't know. Oh, oh. Bad boy, puppy! No! This, <laughs> this is... What a very odd way to name your child. This is... <laughs> bad oh. boy, Bobby. This is very vague. Oh. All right, how about this? I'm not going to look it up, but could I... Hmm. I'm going to have to require an answer from you shortly. I think that he saw approximately 17 naked pictures of his mother, where she keeps them on the back of the cellar door. <laughs> so you're going for pornography. pornographic slash nudie materials. Yeah, I know that's not it. I just, I don't want to say I don't know. So this, that's your answer? Well, without appropriate time to think, yes. That, I'll give mm -hmm. you another two minutes if, uh, you, if you wish. Whoops, sorry about that. And while you think, I will read out another joke for the audience. Well, I can't think. And All right, I'm going to take the headphones off. That's what I'm going to have to do. No, okay. Go ahead. So, audience... Why? Oh, uh, sorry, I fucked that one up already. Shambles, once again. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up and think. What do penguins wear on their heads? Okay, so now you got to think about the penguins. Hmm. What, what do penguins wear on their head? You're probably thinking fair or... No, no that'd, be, that'd be too literal. Don't think literal. because Oh, it's darkness! Also, it's, uh... So what do penguins wear on their heads? It's darkness. Not the penguin joke. Things you've never seen. No, it's not darkness. Ice caps. So there we go. Is it darkness? Okay. Don't insult my joke. So, you've gone for darkness. Yes. Is that your final answer? It is indeed my final answer. 
Okay. Can I have some tension drawing music? So there I was, just laying on the sofa. When I heard three gunshots. It just sounds like an olden time movie. <laughs> it is one. The sound of police sirens were drawing ever closer. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, they're going away. Darn. Wrong one. <laughs> as, I, <laughs> as I looked to the window, the rain and thunder were getting pretty heavy. Wait, did you just do that? <laughs> oh, no, I failed. <laughs> Way to fail the improv, Phil. But... <laughs> The, well, okay, so you said darkness. You yes. are wrong. Oh. The answer is when... <laughs> I know, I'm sorry. When bad boy Bubby opened the cellar door, he saw the living room and through its windows the garden. He had never seen these things before because his mother had kept him in the cellar all his life. Oh, lateral thinking. I was thinking he was on the other side of the door. Turns out wah, his mother wah, wah. is a He was on the other side of the door. His mother is a nutcase. Sorry, people. No free games. <laughs> Please send your hate mail into <laughs> waveofabsurdity at hotmail.com. I will be sure to pass it on to Phil. Oh, it's already being forwarded to me. <laughs> okay, I think that was enough filler. Her, how about we move on to the feature that is storming not only the nation... But the world, it's time for Master Debater. Phil, would you kindly explain our debating topic and how it will work, please? Our topic today, I believe, since we didn't really talk about it before recording, but I'm pretty sure we were going with tipping. Uh, Cow tipping. Yes, tipping your tipping waiter or waitress. Outside. For those of you that do not live in America, tipping is a practice where you give a little extra money to the person that served you your food uh, for their exceptional service or, you know, keeping... Uh, the dazzling good looks. Yes, keeping your cup full, making sure you don't need anything. They're your liaison with the kitchen. Indeed, indeed. So, I, I should say that me and Phil, we never know what side we're going to be on, whether we're going to be pro or we're going to be con. The way we're going to do this is that every week he's going to go on a random number generator. I'm, what am I, am I odd? Yes, you are. I think that's are. what we agreed on because you, <laughs> you thought it'd be hilarious to say, oh, Owen's odd. <laughs> <laughs> and you're even. So, the winner gets to choose which position the opponent is on. Hey -o. So... Phil, would you kindly okay. go on to the random number generator and see random. who's going to win? Now, what, what, what's the numbers between? Is it one in a hundred? Uh, I bumped it up to one in a thousand for no particular reason. Whoa, that's absurd. <laughs> <laughs> that's not absurd. Okay, generating now. 994. Oh, wait, I'm even. Sweet. You are. Damn. So, what side am I going to be on today? <sighs> I think I'm going to put you against tipping. I think I think they're both equally hard to plead a case for. So, but I think... Well, I'm naturally negative anyway, so it's always easier for me to be yes. against something. Now, uh, we're going to do our debate in a quasi-timed format, and we'll leave it up to... Ooh, <clears throat> Excuse me. We will leave it up to the listeners to decide who presented the better argument. Uh, Indeed. Uh, I will be gracious and give Owen the chance to go first with his two minute introductory statement on why he thinks tipping, get this, tipping is bad. I will be timing you, Owen. You may start when you are ready. Okay, so I just want to quickly say that uh, it's going to be two minutes. So two minutes for me to give my case, two minutes for 
Phil to give his taste, uh, give his taste, hi oh, mm. give his, <laughs> give his, you know, rebuttal, and then another two minutes, and then the final one minute is going to be our closing statement. So, Phil, are you ready? Indeed, I am. Okay. Well, as soon as then, the next time I start talking, that will be my time. Okay. So I just want to thank everybody for coming out here tonight. I want to thank Phil for just being here, even though he's going to sorely lose now. A big. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. That's not distracting. Uh, you know, it is a big topic. Tipping. Uh, it's it's more dare I say, quote unquote, religious in America than it is in the UK. And I often feel when I went to America, there there just felt like a, a snobbery of people that expected you to tip and you should not tip it's your own money and it's up to you what you do with the money so let's get to the the basic facts of this thing people who are in these jobs okay they chose those jobs they know what they're getting into if they don't get paid enough that's not my problem don't come up to me with a little sob story i carry plates to and from my kitchen every day i don't drop things i don't get the wrong order i know what i want i know how to hold a plate it's not that hard, okay? It's <clears throat> I don't care if you have to look after 100 people. It's easy, okay? So you know you're in the job. If it was too bad of a pay, you wouldn't be able to do it. You know, you wouldn't do it. But no, people do go out and do their job. So when they come up to you and they have the audacity, the audacity to ask you, not even ask you anymore because I don't talk to them. They give me the card machine. And then on the, the card machines, they've programmed the card machines now to... You know, do you want to tip them? No, I don't want to tip them. Do you know why I want to tip them? They've made, they made their choice. They know what job they wanted. They know how much it was going to pay. There was no secret uh, stipulations with inside the contract. It's not my fault, okay? 30 seconds don't come left. up to me. <laughs> don't come up to me and ask for a tip. That's just begging in the streets. Just because you're in a waiter's outfit, it doesn't make it any more morally right. I would rather give my money to poor starving dogs in Sri Lanka than I would you. Okay. Well, you got pretty vicious at the end. <laughs> what are we doing? I don't care. Forget the show. Fuck you and your tips. <laughs> All right. Pretty impressive, you cold, callous bastard. I'm starting now if you want to watch the time. Okay. They are performing a separate job, Owen. They, When you go to a place to eat around here, I like to point out that this does not involve tipping someplace where you are a regular at or tipping somebody that delivers your food and knows where you live, that sort of thing. But waiters and waitresses, they're a separate entity. When you go and you order food, you are paying for the food, the prep of the food, and eating at the establishment. Now, sure, waiters and waitresses, they get paid a minimal amount to show up, but you... I'm not saying you're responsible for their salary, but you are responsible for, I guess, a part of their salary in that you're paying them. You're paying them to, like I said, be a, a liaison between you and the kitchen. If you were at a restaurant and you didn't like the way your food was repair, prepared, uh, are you going to go back in the kitchen and try to find the person that cooked it? Hmm? You're just going to barge behind there and do that? No, you're going to ask your waiter. If... You need something. Do you know where all the forks are kept? Do you know where the water is? Do you know where your coffee is? No. Your waiter does. There's specific tasks that they will do because they want your money. I don't see anything wrong with that. You did an exceptional job. You didn't just come and throw the food down on the table. You made sure I was comfortable. You made sure I got what I wanted. I, I appreciate that. I have no problem grading you on a percentage. and Because you can also use a tip as an insult. I think people don't look at that in an argument. You could use tipping as a way to critique their service. Of course, you wouldn't want to go back there again, but that's just one of the other pros of tipping. You got one second. There you go. <laughs> okay. So my rebuttal. Well, Phil... Um, you Sorry, made is this some two minutes terrible, or one minute? terrible points that nobody really cares about. So you said that they, that your legion, they, they go around, they go into the back, but that's what they're contracted to do. They are contracted to be happy and polite. They work for 
a you know a restaurant that has standards they're looking for qualities of people they are not paid just to go back and forth from the kitchen they're paid for their manners for their helpfulness and everything else it's all inclusive within their pay now again i go back to the whole thing they picked that job I don't care if the economy isn't shit. Break out, do something, find out you're really funny and come on YouTube and be a partner. You know, you, you could do all sorts of things in your spare time instead of begging, hey. begging people that are happily eating. They, I don't want to see your sorrow, okay? I don't care about your problems. One Keep them to passed. yourself, okay? It's, it's ridiculous. I don't really need much more time for this. What I'm going to say... No, I'm going to keep going. But all I'm going to say is I don't like how they do things. They constantly nag you, okay? And then when you do want one, they're never there. Uh, they usually come over and check on you when you're eating. You got a big bit of steak in your mouth. Next thing you know, is everything okay? Oh, yes. You know, you look like a tit. I think they just do it for the lols. They pick the, no, no, do not ding ding me, motherfucker. Okay? Okay? I still got 25 seconds. <laughs> I'm just going to use this time to insult Phil. <laughs> Phil, you sack. You teddy twister. I don't really need to say any more. They chose the job. They know what's up. It's just a glorified way of begging. If you don't like it, get another job. Okay. Well, before I enter my time limit, I'd just like to point out that Owen's a salty bastard. I mean, we're just supposed to be... Uh, wow, well, I almost said dating. We are debating here. <laughs> Pull the caskets out now. Yeah, it's master debater, not master ranter. Okay. I'm well, you to... haven't put any good arguments against your opposition. Oh, really? I think. Yeah, we'll you let... just haven't said anything. So you got two minutes to change my mind. All right. Well, one of your uh, main points was that you know you tell them get another job. You could do anything. Well. Maybe they can't. Maybe not at this particular point in their life. Lots of people can do anything, but there could be other circumstances. Uh, perhaps they're going to school, and the only job they can really do to cater to their hours, <laughs> see what I did there with the word play, cater to their hours, is to be a waiter. And they're trying their hardest at their job. What's wrong with rewarding that if they did a good job? I'm not saying give a tip. Every single time you go, but give a tip for a job well done. You say it's not, you, you know, it's, it's part of their job. It's in their contract. Maybe. I'm not entirely sure. But even if it is, which I don't, I don't think it is, I don't, I don't see anything wrong with greasing the wheels. Yeah? What if you're going to go back there? Hmm? Maybe, uh, maybe you want to develop a rapport? Maybe that would be nice. Tipping. You get service better, faster, against schlubs like Owen. God. Sorry. This is out of the time frame here, but I'm not going out to eat with you. If, if that no, you still got a minute. Well, you got like 30 seconds. All right. Well, I think mainly to address your point that they can do something else is not always the case. It's easy, easy for the youth to say that, but I don't know. I don't think that's true. I think that they fill a position and sure they're getting paid, but it's well known that you tip your waiter and waitress next time you go there. You're, you're a classy dude. You look like a better person. So do it for yourself, not for them. Oh, God, that was terrible. <laughs> okay, so my closing minute. <clears throat> I once again bring up that Phil has made no compelling arguments <laughs> against it. I didn't say that they should go out and get another job. I'm just saying it's the job that they chose. They knew what was in store for them. So don't give me a little sob story about, oh, be who I need tipping. It just astounds me the way society is for tipping, for bringing plates back and forth and showing me where the forks are and knives are. That's not something that deserves a tip. I tell you what do you deserve tips. Doctors. Doctors are brilliant people. They've saved my lives many of times, and I would happily put a five pound note in their pocket, slap his, you know, cheek and say, make this a good surgery. You know, that's, that's a good, that's a good, that's a better use for my money than it is giving to a stingy little blonde bimbo who's picked this job, knows what's in for it, 
it's 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 not my problem. If you think I'm an asshole for not tipping you, tough shit. I don't care. Don't make it mandatory. America tipping sucks. At least in England, we get to choose if we tip or not. So, f you. Well, we got to choose too, you know. Well, it's pretty mandatory. It's not pretty mandatory. No it is where. pretty mandatory. People like put mandatory? it on the bills. They automatically add it. And then if you're going for delivery, they expect to tip again. And again, no, no. it's another whole sometimes, thing. But, sometimes you know. on the bill, it says gratuity is included in the bill. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. but that's, those are just words. You don't know what's going but on. But hey, there. yeah, that was my closing minute. Right. And uh, I will start my closing minute now. Owen is an asshole. No, okay. My closing statement is actually one of confusion because I'm not even entirely sure why we tip people at the end. You would think it would be better if we tip them at the beginning. That way, they could give us service accordingly. It's like, all right, you know I'm not going to tip you. You know this is going to be terrible service anyway. Let's just go through with it that way. Or, here's some money. I want some extra special service. Why do we tip at the end? Why do we wait? To see if they're going to do all right. Tip your waiters in the beginning. See what happens. You might be surprised. Okay, well, <laughs> happy Owen. So if you if you got any idea, well, I don't know who won between us two because I think it was a pretty even tie. <laughs> no, I don't. But we're going to let the viewers decide. So leave a comment or email us. Uh, at wave of absurdity at hotmail.com and the one with the more votes will be declared the winner in the next podcast oh well that's i wasn't expecting okay okay surprise <laughs> bitch <laughs> you really you really pegged me on this one oh phil didn't win you a game sorry people <laughs> so oh. not only i don't i don't i don't want to sway the votes or anything <laughs> but phil has denied you a chance of winning a game. I'm just saying. He's denied you that opportunity with his horrible lateral thinking. But thanks for watching, well, listening to Master Debater. Oh, I meant... We really need some official Master Debater music. All right. We, we really do. How long have we been going on for? Uh, it has been recording for an hour now, technically, although I would say 45 minutes would be my estimate. Okay, well, it's now time for, I I know I already said this, for Master Debater, and I know, well, it's bigger than Master Debater, because this doesn't just span the nation, the countries, the whole world, this goes far beyond our galaxy, it's time for Mamma Mia! What's the mouth, Phil? Mmm. <laughs> it's my... So, Phil, what do we have to eat today? Well, first, I'd like to clarify, Owen, that I think you failed the challenge. However, I did prepare this food, so... And I am actually quite hungry now. Uh, I have... Shall I tip you while you eat? I'm serving myself. I'll tip myself. Wow, this has cream cheese on it. I probably shouldn't have left it out for an hour. <laughs> So what are you eating? <laughs> it is uh, matzos. I think that's how you pronounce it. It is unleavened bread. Uh, it is completely tasteless. I know this for a fact. It is basically a vessel for uh, dips and spreads. Uh, it's got some religious meaning behind it. I don't know. I don't care. But it, <laughs> a whole box of it came free if you purchased Fifty dollars or more groceries at a particular place. So why not, right? Sounds why like not? they're selling religion. Uh, they're giving it away, Owen. They're giving <laughs> it away. Only if you spend fifty dollars or more. <laughs> so I have. Okay, that still smells good. I have. I guess. <laughs> Do you it's think a, food goes off in an hour? Well, it's cream cheese. Uh, it's just it's possible. Is that it's like a, heat a dead row killed rabbit, and you come back an hour and a half later, and there's nothing left but bones. <laughs> it's because it's already decomposed. Yeah. All right, I have a bit of crunchy matzos with some cream cheese and uh, put some chives on it. I have a little flavor. It's a bit spicy. Go for it. All right. Oh, it's not as crunchy now because <laughs> the cream cheese has had time to seep into the pores. Let me see if this bit is crunchy. Mm, I got cream cheese on my mic. <laughs> That's not cool. 
Mm. This is a rancid. Mm. <laughs> now I made two little squares. They're really quite small. I'm chewing this shit is a fucking chore. Even apparently after it's been saturated. Saturated. One more bit left there. Mmm. 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 That's good cream cheese. Philadelphia cream cheese. Mmm. Mm. Alright. Ah. Mmm. Not too bad. Not too bad. And that was Mamma Mia! Cut you off. That's enough! <laughs> I know. No, thank you. Ah. No, thank you. No. Sit down, please. Oh, come on. I needed that time to drink. Oh, hey. So, do you know what time I think it's for? Is it time for me to wipe off my microphone and following that viewer mail? Listener mail? The very same. Excuse me. <laughs> You're just like a messy child. Well, I was trying to get it, you know, near the microphone, not on it. God damn it. Okay, so Phil will be reading the viewer emails today. Okay. So, am I saying the name of the person that sent it in? Is that oh, correct? yes. Oh. How are they going to know it's them? Well, I'm assuming they'd be like, hey, that's my question. <laughs> yes, but they also want bragging rights. Right. Fair enough. Hmm, hang on a sec. A little crumb there. Shambles. This is just pure shambles. <laughs> what? That's what that's what Reno would have wanted me to do. I want to make sure that my mouth is clear of all foreign objects and foods. I better get out of your way then. <laughs> oh my god. That was actually funny, but I was drinking and unable <laughs> to laugh or use sound effects. <laughs> Reno asks. Where would you be right now if YouTube would not, uh, well, if YouTube did not exist? I think that's what he meant to say. Because if YouTube would nice not exist. Nice sentence would... structure, dick. <laughs> yes, where would you be right now if YouTube would not exist? Ever. Um, <clears throat> I think for me, I'd be definitely a lot more active. I say active, I think I'd be out a lot more. But who needs to go outside? Because I heard that uh, the effects of aging worsens the more you're in the sun. So if I ever get to like 70, I'm going to look 30. It's going to be amazing. So I guess, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't really have any of my <clears throat> well-known internet buddies, such as, insert name here, and <laughs> you too. <laughs> what, uh, what would you, four years ago? What would mm -hmm. what would be a a career path option if you're like I want to be I want to be finish that okay sentence. yeah so um for, well I I did this in 2008 so in 2009 <clears throat> I was st I was in college learning childcare so I guess I didn't go back um because I just couldn't be asked because <laughs> fuck the children. <laughs> not literally <laughs> hey -yo. but with but with hugs and <laughs> oh oh great story great story so <clears throat> how is friend... this gonna segue into a great story <laughs> fuck the children i got a great story phil yeah uh, it involves balls and kids uh it's a great story so i was in college learning childcare course blah 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 and we got like you know you have work experience so um me and my friend we went into you know, a, a nursery, a daycare, whatever. And we were playing with the kids uh, above the waist, obviously. Mm. And You, you had know, them we, above we, your we, waist? How'd that feel? <laughs> above their waist. Hey. Didn't help for the ladies, though. <laughs> so, above the shoulders, then. <laughs> so, we got we got bored, as you do, because kids are quite boring. You know, I, I, I drew some planes for them. And then they got annoyed because they couldn't see the other wing of the plane and i was saying no it's perspective i was trying to teach them perspective but they weren't having any of it so i was just like oh 
fuck it, I'll just draw another wing. Ruin the whole goddamn plane. I was quite impressed with the way I drew my planes, but the kids weren't, so... Do you still not have only, it? Yeah, true story. Not only did they screw up my drawings, they also didn't want to learn about perspective. Assholes. <laughs> so we're, we're outside playing, playing with the kids, doing the thing. Uh, my friend... Let me show you some perspective, kid. <laughs> Come with me. So my friends, you know, we're just playing a bit of football. We're just kicking it, you know, to each other, blah, blah, blah. And this kid's just like, hey. I know what football is. Thanks. Yeah, good. Hey, I want to play. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so my this friend. Is, so this my is friend, part of your answer, Reno. So my friend was like, okay. So then he kicks the ball. And it was like a, a high, it was like a Michael Bay movie sort of thing because it went in slow motion. The ball was hurtling towards the kid. The kid wasn't moving. He wasn't doing anything. The next thing you know, the ball just smacks the kid in the face. The kid falls to the ground in a dramatic slow motion sort of state. The ball's all muddy because it's been raining. So he's got mud on his face. You know, we're supposed to be looking after the kids and here we are damaging them wow. for work experience. And we're like, oh, Shit. So we run up, I like brush his face and, you know, I'm, I'm brushing my, uh, brushing his face quite hard. So I like slapped him in the face by accident. <laughs> you know how it is. I'm just like, you know, brush, brush, no. brush, so, like smacked him in the face. And I <laughs> accidentally made a fist twice. <laughs> and then we like hoist him up, you know, put him back on the ground, wiping his face. <laughs> and then we're just, we're just like, oh God, don't cry, don't cry, don't cry, don't cry, don't cry. <laughs> and then I think we, we I don't know what we did, but we, we made him laugh. And then we just got like the <laughs> hell out of there. And then we, ne we never went back to that place. I don't know why. Weird that maybe, you maybe don't remember that part. Maybe <laughs> somebody a child in the <laughs> face with a ball. But brilliant. That's but yeah, a... I deviate. I, I guess I would have gone back to the second year of college, I guess. And well, probably would right now be working in a daycare. So thank Harming you. children. So, yeah, thank YouTube for taking me away from little babies i, I appreciate <laughs> that i really do so essentially youtube serves two purposes entertainment and keeping own away from fragile little kids it's a service that keeps on giving come here little ben come here. <laughs> I'm gonna get you I'm gonna get you yeah, sorry you were saying michael bay that is totally not what i was thinking in the realms of drama uh I was thinking so more. where would you be, Phil? Uh, well, I wouldn't be too much different because yeah. I don't think this question applies that much to me, I guess. Uh, I would be watching viral videos somewhere else. Uh, well, just say like if there, there was none of that, there was no like user-created videos on the internet, you know, um, like what would you do? I, I can't say it would affect me that at all. I would. Well, I wouldn't. I mean, you'd we'd probably see a lot less penises. <laughs> well, yes. I guess I would probably have a generally nicer disposition <laughs> in life if YouTube wasn't around. Uh, I feel like it was a bit different early on. Um, it's a little more community-minded, mm. whereas mm. now, I don't know. Now it's people want to make money. People are. You know, doing all these. I remember the day stunts. Well, yeah, people want to be e-famous, I guess, in a way, but without doing anything substantial. So you end mm -hmm. up with a lot of videos where people are degrading themselves. Yeah. And I know, I guess it is entertaining, but I feel like it's entertaining in the wrong way. That you could end Indeed. up becoming a very <laughs> sour individual. Watching some guy, not naming names, eat a cheeseburger with a wrapper on. Uh, I don't know. It seems like just another thing. Maybe I am an old fart, but it just seems like another thing that I'm going to have to monitor while my child is growing up. Like, oh. Shout out to Shoe Nice. Uh, next email. <laughs> if you will. This is from, oh, our boy Gregory. <laughs> So, your channel is getting to be quite famous, and with the help of Phil's nipples, you have attracted more sexy men into this fan base. Now, 
what are your plans for your awesome PC Gamer 999 channel and your Owens Vlogs channel in the days to come? Spelled C U M. Also, Phil still owes me a taste of those sexy nips. <laughs> this is from. Oh, oh, do you want to add? Uh, do you want to? Yeah, I'll tackle this one first. Okay. Okay. Uh, let me know, or let me tell you. Let me know, though. Let me tell you that I don't understand the first part of this whatsoever. Oh, uh, your I, sexy nipples have attracted a lot more sexy men into the. The fan page. Yeah. So is he addressing you at first or me? No, he's, he's addressing, he says, with the help of your nipples. So Phil's nipples, your nipples. Are helping you. Uh, helping me, yes. Attract more sexy men into the fan base. Yes. So I don't even get the compliment there of being a sexy man. I mean, be, man. well, because a lot of people, oh, how can I say this without sounding uh, big-headed? <laughs> um or um, oh, how can I say this? I can't. I can't. Okay. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna whip I'm just gonna whip it out. But a, a lot of people know you because of me. Well, yeah. So but... I made you. <laughs> <All right. laughs> you made me in your own image. Then why don't I have a smaller penis and an extra nipple? Oh no. Oh ow. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, all right. Well, that's still very it's very confusing, Gregory. Um, let me just tackle the nipple part. One. I don't know how that started. Ooh, something feels a little tight in my shirt area, though. <laughs> I'm not sure entirely how that started, but the only picture you will ever see of my nipple is going to be a thousand times enhanced. That I will do for you. You will never taste them. However, it's possible over the course of the podcast, I will eat something that might taste just like my nipple. I can't. I don't think. Hey, hey, it's not going to reach. I'll never be able to taste it. But we've all tried. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose if I lick my fingers and rub my nipples. I'm getting quite hot under the collar now. And then I'll lick my fingers again. I'll go to jail. I know how to get rid of erect nipples. <laughs> Talk about Phil's nipples? <laughs> so if you've got like a, a stubby erect nipple, um, just push the nipple in and then pull to the left or to the right. And uh, well, pull, about... pull, just pull to the left, basically, and it will get rid of the nipple. Well, it won't... it won't get rid of it. It won't just fall off and you know become its own entity. But it, it will not be erect. Yes, you possibly will be able to go through life without the assistance of teddy bears when you masturbate. Uh, I guess so, I should just quickly uh, address the first part question. Of question. Mm. Please. So, what's what's my plans for my channel? Um, I don't know. I've got some some things in the work that are taking extraordinarily long to do. Uh, we've also got this. Um, but for solo projects, it's just pretty much the same. Again, I did say I'm working on something. Hopefully that gets out in a timely manner. Lol, JK. Uh, as for Owen Vlogs, that's for my more serious sort of shit. Um, right. And I only really do stuff if something affects me or if something affects a friend or if it's just a life, uh, a, a life experience. So that just comes whenever. But yeah, next. Oh, thanks for the question, Gregory. Not really. You're fucked up. Next, uh, next email. <laughs> no, that was really a, uh, uh, that'll work kind of question. Uh, this is from Julian. I don't know why I said that so exuberantly. <laughs> How long, dramatic pause, do you see yourself doing this YouTube business? How long do you see yourself doing this YouTube business? I don't know. I've been doing it for four years. That's crazy in itself. Um, I don't have a set date, but... Tomorrow. I, <laughs> I guess... I, at the moment, I can't see myself giving it up. And even if I do have the thoughts of giving it up, it's actually getting into that sort of mind state action of actually giving it up. So, Do you still enjoy doing what you're doing? Hell yeah. Do I you enjoy yeah, it more? Of course. 
right. Dude, it's, it's yeah, it's ever since like obviously technology has uh you Are know, you doing gone something on, else while answering user questions? <laughs> well, no, technology's gone along with the time. So now uh, rendering and video editing is much faster than before. Uh, video capture quality is much better than before. Oh. So it's it's a much it's it's a very good time to get into it now. So all these eases in technology, I don't have to deal with the the annoying glitches and bugs anything anymore. So yeah, I I, I really do enjoy it. Um, I also enjoy being very sarcastic and borderline offensive uh borderline <laughs> yeah I, I am offensive and that's that's one thing that i absolutely love is that i never really censor myself so you know i i will go out and insult allah or insult your god and i'll also insult myself i mean i'm just one big pot <laughs> i'm just one big pot of commentary so nothing you even Phil, Phil is up for grabs. Every, in, in my world, everybody is up for grabs. <laughs> and it, if you, <laughs> Phil's where, next. Where you if you, if you laugh at grabs? one thing, you have no right to claim offense on another thing. So, yeah, I just try and keep a community of sort of open-minded people. You know, laugh at the nine eleven tragedy, and you know, laugh at some <laughs> poor disabled person oh, falling it. over. You know. So, you know, uh, if, if it's funny, you can't help laughing, but no, just no because somebody laughs end. with it, don't call them an asshole because they laughed at it. If it's funny, it's funny. You know, I, I just try and keep I as think, unpolitically correct. I think you I should take the high ground and yell at people when they don't laugh at you and when you make <laughs> jokes that are in the gray area. <laughs> How did we get onto this? I don't know. Um, Yeah, so, I, yeah, just I, I don't see me giving it up any anytime soon <laughs> I, I love like, the way you phrase that yeah I like instigating some sort of quote unquote offense every now and again that always makes me laugh but uh, yeah I don't I don't see myself giving up anymore well very long I don't know what I'm saying next question okay Phil asks <laughs> what do you think is the most inflammatory thing that you have uh, still up for viewing um, oh, <clears throat> okay. Um, oh, uh, th there's so many. I, I, uh, all right, we'll just pick one. All right, maybe not the most. So, so one, one that I actually enjoyed doing was because I, I, I love, uh, <laughs> how can I, well, I, I love mocking religion. Um, some people may hate me for that. Um, Hello. A lot of people do. But again, I, I come as a whole. So if you laugh at one thing, don't. Go at me for laughing, uh, for saying something about your religion, I know. But uh, there was one, uh, it was in Postal 2, where, you know the whole thing, you know, don't, what was it, don't make any images of your, the Prophet Muhammad. Ah, oh, yes. And whatnot. Yeah, so, you know, anybody that makes or dishonors Allah, well, no, well, you know, Muhammad well, doesn't, well, you know. So, in Postal 2, I found this Muslim, he yeah, had, you know, Tarabinon and everything else. So I, I, I killed him. I beheaded him. You know, I, I find that quite ironic justice. Behead the, <laughs> I'm just digging myself a bigger hole. Be <laughs> behead the prophet Muhammad, uh, then set his head on fire, uh, then put out that fire with my own piss. Um, oh. that's, think, that's one that springs to mind. Uh, I think one that's, that. a, that's a good standout moment. <laughs> that's, that's one that's, uh, I enjoy I enjoy poking the beast, so to speak, with a with a stick and see when it when it comes at me. But um, I, I I never say anything just to go out to offend. I will either say things that can be well, that are in context or they're done ironically. I will never just go out and see a poor crippled boy and just start poking fun at him for being a cripple and how he you know, got lab. crippled. Uh, yeah, it, it's it's not it's not my style. So I it's always done with context or you know ironic so if i do say something that's offensive look at it in context or see if i'm putting some spin of irony on it so uh have you ever you gotten know. hate mail uh yes i <laughs> oh really that's my goal oh sorry go ahead you got hate mail that's cool i mean i had this one dude who tried to convert me to being a muslim uh he you know he, he doesn't like it that i go around dishonoring Muhammad or whatever, but so, uh, there was so can't beat him, join him. Was that what it exactly? Is? I mean, that's not going to work. But there was one dude who quite recently he was going on about 
I'm not going to go too much into this because I could do. And this is supposed to be a funny <laughs> podcast. Laugh, laugh, <laughs> laugh. <laughs> but there's a dude who I said something about the Bible and uh, and the Quran. And he said, uh, that offends me. And then I just went on to a whole spiel about he wanted me to tone down. And I, I just basically said, I can't cater to individual emotions. You know, offense is a very personalized thing. Uh, I don't believe in the word offense anyway. Uh, it's just a higher form of annoyance. Yeah, you can't spell offense without... Oh! <laughs> I don't know, sorry. <laughs> yeah, you, you made me lose my train of thought there. I'm so. sorry. Would you like me to advance to Ryan again? Oh, yeah, yes. He, next, Ryan, next email. What, was Ryan the one that had the massive uh, amount of... Yes, and I just okay. trimmed it down. Okay. Oh, I see your choice here. Interesting. Where do you, Owen, and Phil, thank you, stand on this issue? Why are you in parentheses? That's cool. I guess he thinks he's mailing you first. Ha <laughs> ha, little do you know, I got the email first. Uh, hey, where, do you, first. where do you stand on this issue? How do you think it will work out? And where do you stand on same-sex marriage? We're talking about the present and all that, but... Uh... Yeah, um, it's a bit crazy. Sorry, I'll take a breath. So, how do we stand on same-sex marriage? Well, I lie down for it. Because <laughs> that's how sex. Meh. Uh, I, <laughs> this is getting really serious at the end here. Mm -hmm. So, I'm just gonna say I'm all for it. You know, again, yeah. it comes down to the whole religious religious thing. Uh, yeah, honestly, I could care less. I just, exactly. I just, so many things to worry about. Why? My personal opinion actually is that I think same-sex marriage and once they get over the gray area of adopting children, I think that could help out a lot. There'd be a lot of couples looking for children, kill two birds with one stone, and I don't mean slicing off two gay men's penises, just <laughs> what, who is it affecting, really? I don't know. I think, like most men, uh, when I think of same-sex marriage, I think, ooh, two women doing it, nice. I think uh, a penis in another man's butt, I think, ew. But that's a visual thing. That's a sexual preference thing. Uh, it has nothing to do with marriage. So, I don't know why I did that. <laughs> well, a very somber turn. So, before we end this, I think I'm going to put out another lateral thinking. Just to lighten the mood here a bit. Are you up for one more? Uh, sure. Is it going to end up with some light thing like a kid coming out of the cellar for the first time <laughs> you know it <laughs> oh my lord here's, here's one of the options an old lady who looks like she's about to die anyway so you are driving down a road in your car on a wild stormy night when you pass by a bus stop and see three people waiting for the bus you see an old lady who looks like she's about to die an old friend who once saved your life and three, the perfect partner who you've been dreaming about. Knowing that there's only one passenger in your car, whom would you choose? Oh, oh. so wait, is this lateral thinking? Am I supposed it to is. get all three it of is. them? Is like the bottom, is my goal here to get all three of them away from, what was it, a disaster? Yes. Oh. Yes. So, all right. I'll type it out in the chat for you. All right, so, so you can have a little an old woman. Right. So there's an old lady who looks as so if she's about to die, an old friend who once saved your life, and the perfect partner who you've been dreaming about. Okay, so knowing but, there's only one, only one pa passenger in your car, who do you choose? Well, it says they're waiting for the bus. <laughs> mm -hmm. Brrr, they're waiting by a bus stop. A oh, bus stop. Okay. I'm um, waiting for the bus, yeah, so... So my goal here is to get everybody to safety. Uh, I, I'm confused because I well, would just pick up the perfect partner and tell my friend, hey, look, you saved my life. Take care of her. Oh, but yes. then what about the old lady? She she might not make it. Well, he can save her life. All right, all right, all right. Uh, so I want to get all these people to safety. Okay. Yes, there can only be one passenger in in the car, so who do you choose as your passenger? I... I am the bus driver. I pick them all up. I I really do like your thinking, but you are wrong. Oh, come on! <laughs> so, you would choose the old lady, of course. 
So after helping the old lady into the car, you give your keys to your best friend and wait for your and wait with your perfect partner at the bus stop. <laughs> so you've saved a life. You've you've met your friend. You know he's not going to steal the car because he's your friend. And now you've got a love interest. It's a happy ending. Yeah, I'll tell you what's a happy ending when we're all on the bus. Um, all right, everybody. Well, thanks for listening to the shambles of a show that is Wave of Absurdity, Absurdity, <laughs> episode one. Maybe we'll make an episode two. Who knows? It depends. But again, if you have any questions, uh, opinions, or uh, tell me who won Master Debater, please email in. What's the email address, Phil? That is Wave of Absurdity. All one word at hotmail.com. Feel free to mail in anything that fits in the email text, pictures, sexy pictures, naked pictures of penguins. Okay, everybody. Well, thank, thanks for listening. Uh, yes. <laughs> I think, I think we'll cut it off uh, where you say thanks for listening. <laughs> I like the. Uh, Yes. <laughs> yeah, cool. I'm like, cut. I would also like to thank Frederick for emailing us quite a lot of master debater topics. It's much appreciated. Again, this podcast is fueled on user content, so please do email us at waveofabsurdity at hotmail.com. Thanks for listening. Much love and goodbye.